You've mentioned this earlier, but just to take a small detour, what are we supposed to think about North Korea and their declaration that they're supposedly a communist nation? What, what can we say uh, about the economic, the political system of North Korea? Or is it just like a hopelessly simple answer of this is a complete disaster of a totalitarian state? So I think the the answer that a historian can give is a historical answer, right? That we have to inquire into how you know, what has to happen in order to arrive at the past we are today, where you have a regime that's claiming to be communist, uh, or uh, a has an even better version of Marx's original ideas uh, in the form of a Korean adaptation called Yuche. Um, how does that mesh with? the reality that we're talking about a dynastic government and a monarchy in in all but name but a communist monarchy if that's if that's what it is i think that um examining as much as we can learn about a closed society that is um goes about its everyday in in ways that are inscrutable to us is very very challenging but the only answer when an example like this escapes your analytic categories, uh, probably there's a problem with your analytical cal categories rather than the example being the problem in all its messiness. Yeah, so th there's a component here in the release to China as well to bring like uh, somebody like John Mearsheimer into the picture. There's a military component here too, and, I, and that is ultimately how these nations interact, especially totalitarian nations interact with the rest of the world. So. Nations interact economically, culturally, and militarily. And the concern with countries like North Korea is the way for them to be present on the world stage uh, in the game of geopolitics is by flexing their military might. And they invest a huge amount of their GDP into yeah. the military. So I guess... The question there to discuss in terms of analysis is uh, how do we deal with this kind of system that claims to be a uh, communist system and what lessons can we take from history and apply it to that? Or should we simply just ignore and look the other way as we've been kind of doing, hoping it doesn't, get, it doesn't get out of hand? Yeah, I mean, there's... Um... Realists see states following their own interests and um, prioritizing their own security, and uh, there's probably not much that can be done to change that, but conflict arising as a result of misunderstanding or mixed messages or uh, 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 misinterpretation, uh, those are things that, that, that policymakers probably do have some control over. I think that... Um, there's internal processes that'll work their way out in in uh, uh, even as opaque a place as North Korea. There's it's also the reality, just as we saw with the divided Germanys, that um, it's a precarious kind of uh, twinned existence when you have countries that are across the border from one another that are derived from what used to be a single unit that now are kind of a real life social science experiment in what kind of regime do you get with one kind of system, what sort of regime do you get with another kind of system. And that's a very a, a very unstable setup, as it turns out. 